one thing, but also the fact that sieging, siege-wise, well, you guys shared your thoughts here. We're going to be loading up into game number one. Again, the best of three, the series, the battle for the king of the hill of group A between CU Soon and Onik. And with the lineups that they have for this game, we'll see who starts the momentum for the series here. Welcome it all comes to down to this Legends. start. From what we've seen from CU soon, oh. mostly. Whoa, hold on, Ra. Oh. Uh, he's walked up too oh. far, and that might just be first blood. Ooh. No, he survives. Okay, Boots doing a really good job, especially at level one, really abusing the Sand Tornado to make sure that he is just absolutely gnarly in this matchup, because he knows even if he gets chunked down at the very least, as soon as he hits level two, he's just going to top himself back up. Okay, as I was also doing all that, I was getting a little worried because I'm like, see you soon has started off momentum usually. Oh. And then they almost got taken out, but even Kose, he's going to have to be careful here. He has Boxy with him, but, you know, relatively well when you look at the lineups here and you, I want to take us through the emblems here. Yasu, can you, yeah. anything particular out here? Well, uh, the thing is, we have seen Khalid do, uh, during the whole M5 series going for a full I would say a full. This this time he he have this one uh, part of a tank emblem, but he he goes always for a full damage with the assassin emblem. So so far this is what I expected from uh, after seeing Boots pick up this uh, this Khalid. But I didn't definitely expect him to go aggressive at the first at the first minute at the mid lane, not even on the top lane side. I mean, that's what you need to expect when you have a Khalid on your side, right? It's about map influence in the earlier stages of the game where he is one of the strongest level ones in the game thus far. I mean, then there's also Thamas, but then we have to start comparing the meta, and that's a little too much work to actually yeah. do right now. But let's focus on the f simple facts, right? First, Kusei okay, has Master Assassin as a Brody. That is not normal whatsoever. He is expecting CW to kind of be left on his own island. Yeah, and with the, I mean, look at what's happening already, right? The focus here, trying to at least get anything if they can, but first turtle will be enough. They're going to get a situated Felix, though. Oh. I mean, Felix is playing this well, right? It's important for Felix to actually trade against this Khalid alongside the wave so he can get multiple vengeances down to top off the health. But now here we go. Astral Echo has been laid out. They spot all four oh, members, oh. and it's huge! Yeah. They get a great knock comes to Netherrealm, keeps them alive. Now it's going to be the final slash to actually turn things around. First blood onto Kyrie's side, and even Keyboy trying his best to get pulled back by the Shadows MP. Zaz finds the kill onto the MP, the King. The Minoan Fear was not able to turn enough, but it's still a two-for-one trade. Wow, this is the chaos that you can expect the Khalid to do when he have that flicker ult, not to mention he also had Keyboy. But Linux is here. Jose is having a good time playing against CW. For me, that was like a preview right, of what that layering can look like when you have Keyboy with this Minotaur, you have the Minoian Fury, and then you have those Raging Sandstorms set up. So really, when you look at that, see you soon. They got a preview of it. They have enough time to kind of adjust from that. Oh. And nice dodge there, nice reflex, the thumbs up as well. But really, when that happens, if they can avoid from that setup, right? Whether that's user, utilizing the final slash from Sorry on Felix and then play around that, disengage, or maybe it's even just use, utilizing the Nether Realm. That timing is going to be so important for Sia soon. So still battling it out here once again for this turtle. Oh! Uh, now we see the Divine Judgment Ooh. landing on towards Kyrie and instantly punishing him for walking up to the turtle side. I thought it was going to be an issue, but it looks like Onik forgot about one simple factor. God. On the top lane side, on the top lane side, all the action is happening. We have just seen Boxy the King. Oh, that was almost a seal. <laughs> He uses a retribution even though he knows that carry is out. But again, I want to speak about something here and that Kaja, this is something I didn't mention. Kaja is one of those heroes when you play a military you should be afraid from because when you are raging out, he can cancel your ultimate. He can take you down and drag you to his teammates. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, CW might be in some trouble here. Whoa. He takes a bit of damage, gets chunked down below half and Boxy the King. Again, they need to start making sure that they keep timers on when Boxy the King actually uses that Divine Judgment. It's dangerous, but it's also a linchpin for CU soon. Yeah, paying attention to that, the timing there. Oh, Ooh. Might initiate. Yep. They go with the blaze. He went so far. And Netherrealm has already been called out as the Astro Echoes calls the rest of the team. The final slash comes on Boy. through, allowing. Woo! Sorry, I'm feeling to get out, but Boots stops the rest of the follow up with a raging sandstorm. They find a kill back with the help of Sands. And Boots goes down Kyrie now with a spatial migration, wow. finds a double kill with the help of the Violent Requiem. That's going to be four down for nothing. Man, again, and it, it, like, it looks like it might go in the way of CS2, and then all of a sudden. 
smack comes on it. And it was overlaid really well, but still, it's not a huge lead for them. See you soon, can kind of recollect here, try to find their own timing. And right now, that's gotta be Boxy. He's gotta be able to find things up. But this might not be it right here. He's trying to... Oh, wow. what's he trying I'm not to do? Sure, I'm not sure what he's trying to do. Again, <laughs> well, hey. bait something out here. Let's see if he lands it. Nope, forced the flicker out of there, Sans. He, want, he wanted that kill. He wanted that kill bad. Yeah. In the, last team fight, in the last team fight, crowd control speaks at its finest. We have seen a lot of crowd control being utilized on the side of Onyx team just to make CU soon paralyzed on that top lane side. But again, CW, I said the opposite. I said that Kosei is having the best time of his life, but after CW got those four assists in the early game, I cannot imagine how will he do in the mid game. Yeah, yeah that's tough. Right, you gotta kind of adjust from that, knowing that this is gonna be a minor advantage for CW, at least in the gold lane, he's gonna continue to farm up. So if you're CU soon, once again, you wanna be able to buy Kosei some time. You wanna contest these, though, and that's uh, that's what I like them doing here. But really, can they actually get a pick off? That's one of the biggest questions when you're utilizing this Kaja pick. Right now, they have the positioning on the turtle, though, and it looks like Onik might actually just give it up. Kyrie's not even a part of this, so yeah. MP the King getting that second turtle. It's just too much effort, too much time, too much resources when Kyrie needs to start building up to his first and second items. I mean, at the end of the day, CW got a free tier one down bot side, and for what? For CU soon to get a turtle, just a bit of EXP and a, and a bonus turtle dragon buff? Like, it doesn't really do too much for them overall compared to Onik, who's getting influence over the map. Well, seeing that bot lane turret has been destroyed right now by team, Onik, I can imagine seeing, uh, seeing Kyrie oh. in really good bushes. Oh, they've already started things off. The final slash oh. comes out towards Kyrie's side. I don't think... Ah, uh, Felix now getting punched, but here comes the Nether Realm for the counter. Engage Retribution already being used, but sorry, I'm Felix still trying to get on oh, out. Oh. Sans almost getting it, but here comes the Raging Sandstorm flickering on towards Felix's side. It's too much damage. They pull back. Luckily, no members of Onik go down. I could be wrong, but Sans finds another one in Boxy the King. He doesn't miss a shot. Man, the, the pulling back and forth and just kind of whittling things down against Sia soon was really well orchestrated there from Onik, and now they're just continuing to put the pressure. Yeah, after, oh, are they taking it? Who took it, who took it, who took it? Ah, oh, it's MB the King. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, after seeing the Divine Judgment, from the side of Team C soon there. I told you about it before it happens. Keyboy, once he triggers his ultimate, he's gonna be dragged down, dragged down by uh, Boxy the King. Oh, there's some recalls here. He's so confident right now. But I wanna speak about something. Whenever Keyboy misses his ult, he have always boots to cover his back. And that's what we saw with this raging sandstorm coming in with a flicker from the side of Team Onyx Team. Man, that's what, that's what is actually scary when you look at it all unfold, right? It's like a perfectly choreographed dance. You have Keyboy there holding on to the Minoan Fury. If he actually gets Divine Judgment, it's fine because you still have the Raging Sandstorm. You still have, you know, Spatial Migration. There's so many possibil possibilities to initiate a fight and pull back. That's what we see, right? First is Keyboy. He pulls back if he has to flicker out. Then you have Boots coming in. And it, that's the problem for CU soon right now is kind of finding their way, navigating through all these entry points from Onik. Right and right now, that might be just again. Time could be on their side if they can stall some stall some of this out. You still have to rely on Kose. He oh, is this conceal. Brody. Boxy though gonna jump in. Oh, conceal! They oh. the four and finds the divine oh. judgment. Kyrie Ooh. fights three and now the violet requiem gonna chunk him out. Now the realm keeps him alive for the time being. And final slash actually whipping. This is not bad for the side of Onik. They still have a majority of their alt still up. Kyrie positioned himself correctly in the next upcoming fight. He can take Brody out. He have a flicker and not a purify. So whenever Kyrie sees Kosei, he's just gonna have really good ideas. Here we go. Oh man, oh. sorry, I'm feeling Ooh. tries to spend, but Kyrie's gonna be able to secure that lord of the back line. He's getting attacked so quickly. And now CW oh. finds a double. Sans gets a mega one blazing duet to put him in the dirt. MP the King trying to run away. Uh -oh. Sans not gonna let him go. Chunks him out. Oh, this is the shot. CW should get this, right? Oh. There we go. Secures the kill. The and double Ra trying to Sans. You uh, wouldn't. You uh, wouldn't. He's taunting him underneath inhibitor turrets and even Keyboy. Getting them back, they pull off, and here comes the Lord already spawned. 
All right, all right, all right. We have just seen a team fight that could have ended with a maniac. CW is just flexing his Demon Hunter Sword. He's flexing his Golden Staff. We have seen the damage. We have seen Sans giving vision all around the map, even though Boxy the King is the one who started that team fight. But the ones who ended it up there in the sky were Team Oni. Again, I'm going to go back to the fact that I was saying before all that unfolded. It's great if you have a Divine Judgment. You pull Keyboy, but then what? And that's where you saw the triple spatial migration gets the Nether Realm out and it collapses from there. It really just feels like there's too many options for Onik right now. And really, yeah. if you do find a pick, do you have enough damage? You know, if you're seeing you soon to actually follow Whoa. up time and time again. Gideon, I know you love the word faint. This is what ha this is what's happening. A lot of the times it's even just Kyrie baiting out the final slash. Exactly, because Kyrie is one of the only few people in the lineup of Onik right now, in terms of the draft, right, playing this Guinevere to get in and out of fights. If we're talking about Boots, he doesn't necessarily want to get out of the fight. He kind of wants to end the fight. And yeah. the same can be said about Keyboy, right? They don't have the most amount of mobility once they've committed all of their resources and all of their spells. Yeah, quick reflexes. That was we got used to by seeing Kyrie, even though he's not an assassin, even though he's playing a utility jungler, but yet, he is still so smooth with his execution. Let's have a quick look here at the in-game equipment. We will see that Brody already have his Blade of Hypnosis and also the Metal Crow, which will give him a little good advantage when it comes to dealing some um, physical damage to the tanky heroes from the side of Team Onyx. Speaking of the tanky heroes, we only speak about here uh, Boots on the Khalid, Kairi as well, and Keyboy. So by banning, by banning that carry, they did manage to have this tanky composition. And by this tanky composition, they managed to torture, I would say, Team Sisun when it comes to the crowd control matter. You know, the more that I look at this and I'm thinking, like, was the carry ban necessary, right? Especially based on the first three picks. And yeah. I think for the time being, I think Coach M had the foresight to see that maybe Siyusu wanted to go for the traditional Kaja into carry pick, right? Because if we're looking at quote unquote tanky heroes, it honestly is just Kyrie and as well as Keyboy. Boots is building full damage right now. And can we first talk about good guy Boots? The fact that he's level 13 to, uh, sorry, I'm Felix, level 11. Yeah. This man is so far ahead of the game, which is not normal for Onik who usually tell Boots, like, you just have to take it. <laughs> well, what I love also about the builds is that, is that I see Kairi building uh, half of the builds, the half of the Cursed Helmet, and also the half of Blade Armor. There's a Conceal. What are they aiming for? I mean, it's just cost efficiency, right? Uh. They're making their way top for Sans, who oh. is going to do just that. <laughs> like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, Novara is probably not the play there, so they're going to go ahead and give up this Lord. Not really much they can do about it. So you're kind of wondering, like, is Sia soon? do they feel like they're in this position now where they're 9k behind and they just have to find anything they can? You know, at this point in the game, it's it's only 13 minutes in here, Yasu. Uh, the defense is possible, theoretically speaking, because you have the Paramus, you, uh, you also have the final slash that can flip things around. But yet, you don't have that wave clearance for Team CU soon. Depending on just having a Brody to clear and to, ha to deal some damage to the minions, the Framus, mm, I wouldn't agree that much when it comes to clearance. So it's going to be a little bit hard to defend in the minutes 13 or 14 minutes in and having 10k gold, uh, or being 10k gold uh, behind from Team Onik. The next engage, I would actually say chaos happening in the Land of Dawn. You have the Minotaur, you have also Khalid, and you have that Guinevere. Everyone will be just flying in the air at some point. Oh. Sans was looking for that, right? But not going to be able to get it. Here's the Lord, though. Bottom side. Oh. Still shots being fired from afar. That's the hard thing for Sia Soon to deal with right now in this siege on the base. So, bottom turret going to be taken out. Onyx still putting the pressure here. They might actually force a situation knowing that they have this kind of lead unless oh. they take the discipline route and they just get the base fully exposed with this first push in. Yeah, I mean, just look at what they're doing right now. Like Onyx, <laughs> they could have synchronized the waves, but they've decided the Luminous Lord is going to crack open the very first inhibitor turret, right? So the next thing yeah. we're going to do is start sieging you down. Like Sans, get as many shots as you want. Put, Make them feel punished for sitting in their base, really hurt them, and we don't have to commit anything, just sweep through their jungle. Yeah, having the blood wings and also seeing the Malefic Crow comes for CW means that the damage will will be more annoying on Team C soon, especially when it comes to Sans, because he's just dropping bombs from far away and dealing tremendous amount of damage to Kosei and especially also to Ra. Okay, so far so good though for CS soon. They're holding it together despite getting Siege from afar. 
You, the, shot after shot from Sands, but ultimately, they only lose the one turret, right? Given the yeah. fact that they are down 10,000 gold, that's not too bad. See you <laughs> soon, though. Look at the damage dealt, right? I mean, at one point, where is that point for them to crawl back into this game? If they can it, stay in the base, defend as much as they can, ultimately, it's going to lead to Onik just taking another Lord, doing the same things until they are ready to actually force an initiation here. So uh -huh. that didn't happen with the first one that they went in with, with the Lord, but still, that's what's the future of Sia Soon, unless somehow, some way, they are actually able to pull something off. This is where I would like to say once again, and why I feel like LaFell likes to say this, imagine if the Arlot, if Felix can actually get a final slash off oh. that's going to help them win a fight. Now you're LaFell pilled. He is I am. He, I, oh, I'm no. missing him. I'm uh, missing LaFell. Look, we got we got to keep a base tier. We got to keep a base tier on I'm the base. desk, right? The important thing is that Onik, at the end of the day, even if they try to force a fight onto CU soon, it can be very awkward, especially when it's underneath their crystal, right? And that's why Onik is purposely, and that's where CU soon call it quits. They're like, okay, we're only willing to sacrifice Felix. And that's about it because he's the most expensive and he's the only one who's going to be able to kind of set this big play up for the rest of us. That five-man dream not going to be there just yet. Yeah, I mean, even in that case, it's like, should we have even been in that side of the jungle for the, the Lord, right? Like, what, what would we do? What would we accomplish? Even if we had the vision there, it, would it have been better if Sia Soon just waited in the base? Yeah, you know, Sargon Felix is going to be up by the time the Lord makes it here. But, you know... Things like that are mm -hmm. just going to further set you back in what you're trying to do, crawl back into this game at this point. Now, 12,000 gold behind at the 17 minute mark. This is where Onik is going to force it, punch it in, and possibly end it here as the Lord makes its way into the base. Yep, they've lost all their inhibitor turrets here. This might be an endgame scenario as now we see that CW, he's got to be careful, right? Even though he does have the BMI in a safe spot, he is nervous about Boxy the King. He could really turn this around for them. They can harass for as long as they want, but as long as there's that counter, uh, counter engage ability from the side of CU soon, oh. there's always the possibility. Kyrie is going to make it the oh. attempt. Keyboy starts things oh. off. Flickers in hard. The Nether is going to protect him. Keyboy ends up losing his immortality. Oh. And now they're letting everything throw in the kitchen sink as well. It's going to be the sad storm. God, that keeps Boots alive immediately after the quicks, after the ult. It's too nasty. They can't do much about it. And Sans has done enough to put them in the dirt. See you soon. Drop the game.